Hi, everyone. So I'm Sunin, and my last name is pronounced as her, although it is written as he. So uh, it's my great honor to present our web conference paper with this long title, just Simon says, I already mentioned it. So it's a joint work with Professor Kang Xin from the University of Michigan. So this is a paper re uh, related to Dolly's electric e-scooter sharing. So it's actually emerging as a ubiquitous web of things services. So right now, this, you can easily use some smartphone apps or even some web service to unlock a scooters or anywhere of the smart cities. And then you can ride it at any destinations that you want and drop it off. So it's now proliferating around the entire world. As you can see, probably in Europe and United States, so we are just uh, entering the spring or probably the summer season. So you will see a lot of scooters uh, distributed in many parts of the cities. And it has now become a very convenient first mile and last mile connectivities for many cities. And of course, there are a lot of interesting problems related to this one. But today, there is, we will focus upon uh, something that's very uh, uh, related to the machine learning and uh, uh, <clears throat> data analytics. And before that, there is, uh, here I would like to also briefly talk about this diagram. There's nowadays, there's, this market is taking off. And as you can see from this diagram, there's, a lot of countries in Europe at, as well as the North America, they are de deploying so many scooters. So it's already a very uh, absolute, uh, absolute uh, picture that is uh, since uh, 2017. But actually after the pandemic, there's a lot of countries, a lot of cities, they are deploying this. And the global market, as you can see from this diagram is, is growing significantly expected in the next couple of years. And today we will focus upon an uh, important question that is related to the scooter sharing, that is how we can predict the accurate flow predictions of the pickups and drop-offs. So pickups are related to where you pick up those scooters and the drop off is where you park those scooters. So it's actually a very important problem for those service providers and operators of those services because it concerns their operation utility, service quality, as well as the allocation of the mobility resources. So they, they need to decide how many scooters are distributed at different parts of the cities. So because those companies, they are high tech and uh, new creative companies, so they are applying a lot of artificial intelligence, machine learning and data analytics techniques to analyze those kind of scooter usage and decide how many scooters they deployed. But this is a kind of another issue. This is also related to today's keynote, like Professor uh, um, Virginia mentioned this about responsible AI. So actually this, the AI machine learning and data analytics techniques will affect those kind of distributions of those WOT resources. So generally speaking, this, um, we can observe this, those kind of fulfilled historical demands they may likely originate from those tourist reasons with already robust mobility options or they may be coming from those communities with financial affordability. So that would be some, some kind of issue. There's also conventional for the machine learning and data analytics. There's those kind of the existing algorithms based on those uh, kind of the optimization techniques. We'll try to redistribute those mobility resources that will favor on those kind of demands with bias. Conventional learning algorithms may try to seek to fit over those historical fulfilled demands based on those collected data from the history as close as possible, because as we can imagine, those kind of algorithms, they try to minimize the error between the historical demand as well as the prediction. So there will be some kind of the single-minded accuracy measures upon their algorithms. And this kind of the issues may likely discriminate those communities with low, com low income or historical underrepresented attributes. Uh, for example, like the uh, left-hand side diagrams, as you can see here, this, those kind of the distributions of the demand may come in from those uh, central business area of the Austin cities in Texas. And those kind of the distributions may be fit, fitted by those existing algorithms in a, in a very single-minded manner. And that will lead to some kind of potential issue, so-called the mobility injustice for those low income and un underrepresented groups. So in this work, we try to address this kind of issues to further see whether we can enhance the mobility justice in a different way. So in order to realize this kind of the analysis, so we are facing two major challenges. First is that 
there still is this uh, lack of uh, mobility fairness and studies upon the dotless e-scooter sharing systems. So in the past few years, so we have observed a lot of system deployed. However, such kind of mobility fairness has not yet been extensively studied or thoroughly understand. And also the second challenge is, if we want to predict those kind of distributions due to the ease of the moon, moon mover, and as well as the first mile and last mile connectivities of those systems, there's still some kind of the difficulties in modeling those kind of complex interactions between the scooter riders and the urban environments. So we have observed this spatial adjacency, temporal closeness, as well as many other heterogeneous and multi-level correlations across different city regions. So in this work, we propose a scheme called the I uh, DES. So I'm not sure whether it's a, a correct pronunciation, but there's a name for our scheme. It's a socially equitable interactive graph fusion framework for the dollars e scooter sharing system. And we provide some kind of the social equitable WOT DS service for the smart and connected communities. And we try to incorporate an important perspective that's related to mobility fairness across the communities as a kind of regularization upon the core model learning. So we try to account for the social economic attributes such as the social ethnicity, income level, as well as the education. And we try to regularize the DS flow uh, predictions for the fair distributions across the advantage and disadvantage communities. So to summarize our uh, major contributions in this paper, so we first address a, an important issue related to interaction modeling. Let's try to see whether we can model the interactions across different graphs of the city regions, as well as the scooter riders based on the novel modeling uh, formulations. So later we will have some brief introductions about this part. And the second part is we try to raise the social awareness for the WOT services. And we try to aim at this realizing the uh, social equitable DS flow predictions in order to realize the so-called responsible mobility modeling, just like what we mentioned and heard from the keynote speakers today, this morning. And uh, we propose a data-driven studies for the WOT. This conducted extensive experimental evaluations with totally more than 2 million rides from three metropolitan cities in the North Americas. So of course, in the future, we will try to address and to see whether we can conduct data analytics in the uh, cities from Europe and other countries as well. So before we go into the details of this work, let me pretty briefly go through some uh, difference uh, from the related study. So, uh, there have been a lot of studies related to spatial temporal uh, mobility data mining. In this work, we try to look at a very important perspective, try to see whether we can enhance the mobility fairness for the dollars e scooter sharing. And while I have some, some work study upon the graph modeling for those traffic predictions, here we try to avoid the so-called aggregation of those graphs and try to differentiate different graphs based on their interactions. And we also try to look at whether we can enhance the resource and uh, um, uh, performance uh, fairness across different uh, regions of the cities for the mobility uh, modern. It also aligns with the current trend for realizing the fairness in the AI and machine learning. So this is a kind of the overview of, of our framework. Uh, due to the time limits, probably I will not uh, discuss too much, but the provided predictions here is try to help the WOT service for the towards the connected communities. And our schemes can be support the city uh, dollars e-scooter sh uh, sharing poli uh, policy decisions, scooter distributions, as well as planning those supported infrastructures like the docks. That is a kind of the overview. And there are basically two major designs. First one is we try to uh, 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 conduct the interactive graph information fusion to dif differentiate different kind of the spatial and temporal graphs across different regions. And we provide the socially equitable adaptations, including the uh, understanding the social economic attributes, such as the social ethnicity, education, and income level. So in our current study, this, we focus upon a binary group feature settings is basically the advantage and disadvantage communities. And we collect those data from the open source uh, website, it's like the census tract from the United States and Canada. And we try to regularize the DS flow of learning here. So this is the kind of the overview of our prediction framework. And we have three major uh, components. And the second part is related to how we build this kind of the graph 
interactions. And we also take into account the data from the weather conditions as well as the event and serving as a kind of the external factors for our predictions. And we also have the other components taking into account the city map as well as their correlations. So we try to build a graph of the city regions and try to uh, discretize the entire map into multiple different regions. And then we build a graph and to see whether we can predict the uh, uh, corresponding flows that is a pick up and drop out at different regions. There are four major designs here as whether we can realize the spatial temporal graph convolution block as well as the other major technical part related to the machine learning. So today, due to the time limits, I could not bring too many formulas and the mathematical form, uh, formulations in these presentations. If you're interested, you can double check on the paper. So let me briefly bring you towards the corresponding formulations here. As in our first part, as we try to build the corresponding spatial and temporal graphs based on the following four different attributes including the spatial proximity, spatial POI, as well as the region to region connectivities, as well as the time series correlations. So in terms of the spatial proximity, so that is just like what Simon mentioned is the first law of the geography, is whether we can build the proximity into the graphs to categorize the uh, correlations across different city regions. And in the meantime, we also take into account the POI, that is the point of interest similarity across different regions to see how those graphs can be built. And we also take into account the commute route preference across different regions. And finally, we develop some interesting approach that's try to build a lower bound of the dynamic warp, a uh, dynamic time warping distance uh, between different uh, 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 trips across different regions to facilitate the calculations in terms of the temporal correlations. And we build multiple levels uh, correlations in terms of the shop, uh, medium and long-term uh, correlations across different regions. So the details can be referred to our paper. And after building those kind of different graphs, then we further develop the interactive graph information dissemination. Let's try to see whether we can build a mutual compatibility across the mappings of different graph embeddings that we obtained from the previous graphs. And we developed the soft mask as a kind of information gatekeeper to control the information passed along uh, dif from different uh, graph embeddings. And then we try to build the interactions across different graphs to see whether we, some of those graphs may interact with each other together and lead to the predictions results and how we can understand their interaction. So later we have, we have some brief results. And it's just to try to avoid the aggregating the conventional multiple graphs to see whether we can further leverage more information. And finally, we have the gated convolutions, try to capture the local and global correlations across different regions. And we capture the corresponding dependencies across those kind of the uh, predictions results. So after talking about this, so probably we don't have enough time, but here is, let me briefly talk about how we realized the socially equitable prediction adaptations. We target at adapting at two perspectives. One is to see whether we can achieve better uh, equitable distributions and allocation of the DS service uh, uh, resources, as well as trying to see whether we can achieve more consistent prediction results accuracy across uh, different advantage and disadvantage communities. So here is, we try to balance the service quality to make sure that the errors experienced by different communities will be uh, similar. This is the second goal. And of course, the first goal is related to whether we can adjust the corresponding demand predictions. So we develop, develop some kind of the unfairness metrics to regularize the corresponding deep learning process. The first part is to see whether we can mitigate the absolute difference between the flow predictions across the advantage and disadvantage communities. And the second part is to see whether we can mitigate the corresponding inconsistencies in those flow estimation errors across different communities. So by incorporating those kind of the unfairness metrics, then we realize a joint objective functions is try to jointly mini minimize the corresponding weighted loss, as well as the, uh, in terms of the prediction error, as well as the unfairness cost. So we have conducted extensive uh, studies based on the three cities that we collected from the open source data set. And our approach achieved overall better performance compared with the other state of the art in terms of the prediction error, thanks to our interactive graph fusions mechanisms. But in the meantime, this, we also 
uh, try to see whether we can enhance the scooter accessibility and reduce the prediction performance inconsistency inconsistency across different communities and from the results that we observe here this overall our schemes will achieve a lower unfairness compared with the other so, uh, sorters and the more details and results can be referred to our appendix and the last but not the least i would like to also share some kind of the preliminary results about the interactions for the spatial and temporal graphs and here this we are showing those kind of interactions and, and interdependencies across different graphs here. This, from the right hand side is the, we can see those colors, stronger colors and uh, dark, uh, uh, lighter color is meaning that they have very strong interactions. And for the Sunday noon, we besides the interactions across uh, uh, each set of the spatial and temporal graphs, we also observe more interactions between the POI and the long-term time series uh, uh, correlations. It's mainly uh, probably because of those kind of the more recreational rides spanning throughout the weekends around those urban points of interest. So uh, due to the time limits, probably I need to stop here. Uh, if you are interested in our, our recent work related to the smart and connected communities, communities as well as the uh, micro mobility studies, so please feel free to uh, visit my website. And thank you so much for attending my presentations. And I'm happy to take in any questions. Thank you. I'll, I'll react like this and like this. Thanks so much, Thank um, you. So obviously, we have three. I, I wanted to leave to leave you to leave you go because typically, if, if if people say these are our most recent results, then this is the most interesting part of the talk, right? So so thanks a bunch for listening. Um, are there any questions in the room? We have about two minutes of 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 time for questions. Oh, hi, may I ask what kind of POI similarity used in your graph structure? Okay, so the POI similarity, so we try to use some kind of that. So we build those POI into a vector list, counting those distributions of the POI uh, with respect to different uh, POI categories. Then we compare the vector similarity based on, let's say this the cosine similarity. Of course, you can also try the other different kind of the similarity metrics for uh, categorizing those similarities. Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, thank you. Sure. I wanted to ask you, um, but I will give precedence to anyone else who has a question. Okay. So myself, not being ex an expert in this in, in this topic, I, I I guess that this is that this problem is present in many kind of market demand driven resource allocation mechanisms, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what are the what are the application limits beyond e scooters, right? What are the application limits of 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 your of your algorithms? So, in terms of the algorithm for this market, yeah, I mean, in in the end, this applies to anything that gets that gets distributed based on local interest, right? Based on and and therefore we get the the problems that you that that you that you that you mentioned about poor communities at a disadvantage, right? So. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder. I wonder. It's, it's, this, this, this must, of course, this carries over mm -hmm. to other types of mobility. But does this also carry over to other types of of resource allocations in communities, in urban communities? Yeah, I think there's a very good question. So uh, probably this, if we elaborate a lot, that would take a lot of time. Yeah, I'm trying to understand the limits. Yeah, so in terms of the communities, of course, this is a very uh, important algorithm that we can distribute not only the mobility resources, but also like the food resources and many other important resources to see whether we can mitigate the corresponding gap is across the different communities in terms of the advantage and disadvantage uh, 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 need. But of course, there's a lot of uh, complex scenarios that we, if we try to apply such kind of algorithms, there's still a lot of uh, difference that we need to try to address and also those kind of challenges, for example, like the heterogeneous distributions of those communities, because many communities, the advantage and disadvantage communities, they are distributed in a very uh, highly heterogeneous manners. This, uh, if we try to use the algorithms and use the data, so still we need to uh, rely on a lot of uh, um, city planners as well as the many other uh, help from the local governments to yes. see whether we can cater for the individual needs because that is a very uh, challenging part 
But right now, is we are working towards these directions to see whether we can get more assistance from those kind of operators and service providers. And hopefully, in the next few years, so uh, we can expect more uh, interesting work from this direction. Yeah, thank, thank you for so your very, question. Very, very